So, I don't know if you've ever had this situation where the patient comes to you and they say something like that. I just want a checkup. I'm perfectly okay. You know, I saw my other dentist recently, just moved into the area. And then you look in the mouth and it sort of looks like that. <laughs> so, when we're there explaining to patients about dental treatment and giving them, I don't know, dental education, the problem is that, that the more elaborate your dental education is, the more it looks like you've been trying very hard to explain uh, con concepts to the patient. The more they think this is a sales presentation and the more the patient can be recoiling and thinking you're just trying to sell them something. Be aware that uh, most of your patients who work in a company, if it's anything more than a very, very small company, probably have had sales training. Sales training is the most common form of training out there. Now, I can tell you that if you have had some sales training, and you, you, one thing you cannot stand is being sold to by your healthcare professional. It's okay if you go and buy a car and somebody's selling you something and you're a salesperson, you perceive you're being sold to, that's okay, it's acceptable, you understand. But when you go to your dentist or a doctor and they're sort of using any techniques that smack of sales, it, it can be absolute death. And the number one co uh, complaint that co patients have online is not that you, your treatment was poor, but it was you were trying to sell them something that they didn't think they need. So when a dentist does a course and they might say things like this, do you want to keep your teeth for life or how do you feel about your teeth or how important are your teeth to you? These are the types of things that dentists will pick up from various courses. And they, By the way, the questions are valid. We want to know the answer. But just think about it. Imagine if you went to a podiatrist and you were asked those questions. What would you be thinking? Or you went to um, an optometrist and you were asked these questions in a health history form or something like that. You'd probably be thinking, this is a bit strange. Because for me, how important are my teeth to me? Well, like, you know, all my body parts are important to me. Um, have you just been to a sales training, sir? Is what the patients are thinking. So just because a lot of people do this type of thing doesn't make it right. I'm going to sort of run through a little, just a sort of a graphic type of an animation. And at this point, you're looking at that wondering, perhaps, what does that mean? Just want you to imagine they are a series of pendulum, or penduli, or whatever the, uh, the uh, plural is. But it's, so there's pendulums. Their uh, optimum outcome is in the middle, and the suboptimum outcome is on the outside. This will make sense as I go on for a moment. I'm suggesting for a moment that the selling process or if you like the stepping forward towards the optimum that that actually creates objections so when the dentist sells and pushes and says I think you need to do this and I want you to have this and this is your problem or anything that looks like I'm pushing that that actually creates an, a, a recoil from the patient and the patient may verbalize an objection like well why do I need that so Here's the dentist who says, you need to have an implant. The dentist is stepping forward. I recommend an inlay. All these are examples. Your teeth are very important to you. Uh, you need to floss more. Patient says, but it doesn't hurt. No one told me that before. How much will that cost? Do I really need it? And the old favorite, I'll think about it. What does I think about it actually code for? No. So uh, often, by the way, the dentist thinks that when the patient says, I'll think about it, that they're actually thinking about it. And so you run out to the front office and you say, you know, this patient's thinking about it. Could you please uh, call her? Don't call her tomorrow because it looks a bit pushy. Call her in a couple of days and see how she's going. So the poor front desk person has to then ring somebody up and now you feel like the, the, the dentist who's the stalker. And if the, the patient sees you, the patient's thinking of changing their name and moving to another town to get away from you. If they see you in the street, they cross the road because they get away from you. But you're thinking they're thinking about it. The point is that is what we call... Um, it's polite evasion. They are just trying to say to you, thank you, but no thank you. Anyway, um, so the patient's trying to get away. 
Now look at this situation. The, de the dentist says here, does this tooth hurt when you bite on it? Now I don't know if you can see in, in the clarity there, but there, that's a, like a third molar or something with a, an amalgam in the middle and there's cracks all over the place. Now when the dentist looks at that and asks the question, does this hurt, tooth hurt when you bite on it? What is the dentist actually wanting the patient to say, ideally? Yes, of course they are. So it's like I regard that as a positive proposal, saying, Do you, does this hurt when you bite on it? Nope. Well, it's got cracks all over it, <laughs> but it doesn't hurt. Huh. It probably will. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't. <laughs> you know, that's a surprise. I think it needs treatment. Hmm, what sort of treatment? Well, probably an onlay. And how much will that cost me? Um, it's an investment of £500. Well, I'll think about that one. <laughs> Is this a familiar feeling? Different approach. After the clinical exam, you and the patient are looking at an image on a monitor. I want you to imagine you actually took a photograph using an extra oral camera but with the retractors and reflectors and you've got a really clear photo of that tooth and it's sitting up on a computer monitor that the patient can see and you can see and there it is and now the dentist says to the patient I imagine this tooth here, the, the one with one, two, three, about nine cracks I imagine these, this tooth never causes you any pain at all the dentist is stepping back. He didn't say, does this tooth hurt? He says, he went to the negative. I imagine this doesn't cause you any pain. Never hurts. Two possible responses. Obviously, yes or no. Let's say the patient says, yes, that's correct. In fact, um, this tooth doesn't cause me any problem at all. I didn't think so. These cracks rarely hurt until it's too late. Um, as long as it doesn't split into the nerve, we've got a chance of fixing it. And if it's not bitten on, there's no telling how long it could last. So that's, that's good. Where's the patient's concern now, do you think? Are they thinking, oh, that's good. As long as it doesn't bite on, it's fine. And if I bite on it hard, it'll split and get into my nerve. So the dentist is stepping back, but the patient's left with a, a thought. The patient could have said, uh, no, actually, it, it does hurt. Remember, the dentist came off negative. He said, I... I imagine this tooth with the nine cracks never hurts. No, um, I do feel it sometimes. So in, a, in, a, in this sense, the patient has disagreed with the dentist. Do you think that's a problem if they disagree? Because the first time they agreed, yes, it doesn't hurt. Now it's, they're saying, no, I do feel it sometimes. Well, really, hmm, these things tend never to, not to cause any pain until it's too late. Hmm. Where's the concern now? Is the patient moving forwards or backwards? So stepping forward as a concept results in a win-lose response, which I just demonstrated. Stepping back actually gives us a win-win response. They look similar, but they create different responses. So I want you to understand that we need to accept responsibility because most objections that the patient will come up with are actually reactions to what we said or did. Now, typically a dentist will talk to us and say, you know, I'm fine, all my communication skills are really great, I don't need any help at all. The problem is my team. Can you help them? They just need scripts because they haven't a clue what to say. Um, so then we, because this is what the dentist wants, a, sort of a bunch of scripts to be able to sort of mouth off all this stuff and explain to people things as if these conversations work well, well with scripts. Now, I've got to tell you, we don't use any scripts at all because every conversation is a very organic, real thing. It can't be scripted out. What you do need is some principles and to understand where are you heading in your strategy. So it's sort of more like a bird's eye view of what are you trying to do and then you boil that down to certain techniques. But to actually operate with, with scripts usually sounds very strange anyway. So when you're using scripts, let's just look at there's two ways of doing things. There's reactive versus preventive. We can have reactive communications, which when it comes down to it, are a collection of scripted responses. And you can buy books on the 50 most common uh, objections that dental patients will give a dentist and how to respond. That's not the way we do things. 
because that's really a bit like noughts and crosses. The patient says this, then you say that, and they say this, and you say that. And while it's perhaps comforting to have some sort of script better than nothing at all, if you've no idea what to do, um, it still isn't really a, a complete solution. Uh, to make things work well, it's good to be preventive in our approach. And with advanced communications, the idea is to use a comprehensive system that comprises sort of strategy and techniques that prevent objections and help to deliver optimum treatment. That's the best way that we can be doing things. And it's more like a chess game. It's thinking multiple moves ahead, not simply just being reactive to exactly what the patient just said then. And we can be strategic in dentistry because, as I said early on, dentistry is a business of repetition. What happened yesterday very often is the sort of thing that will happen tomorrow. So our aim is to have a rejection-proof system, which might sound lofty, but in fact is completely achievable. And it results in the patient that wants optimum treatment and never feels like they're being sold to. We're very sensitive about that. Now, you may think, how can I be rejection proof? I'll just give you a quick example. Let's say that I go home to my wife tonight and I say to her, OK, we're, we're going to the movies tonight. I've just booked some tickets. Is there any possibility that it won't just be a pleasant yes or no, but perhaps even an unpleasant no? Something like, have you any idea how hard I've been working today? You've been doing this, that, and having lunches and talking to people. And here I have, I took Mary to the ballet, I took Johnny to the soccer, blah, blah, blah. And I'm exhausted. You come swanning home telling me that we're off to the movies or something, and I'm half dead. You have no concept. Let's say I want to avoid that little discussion. So I could come home and I could say, you know what? There's a movie on tonight that it's won these five Academy Awards at the Cannes Film Festival. Apparently it's fantastic. And I was really hoping to see it, but as I was driving home, I was thinking, you know what? I'm sure that you're way too exhausted. You've been looking after Mary and John and you took everyone to the ballet. And so I'm thinking we probably shouldn't go. What's the result of that? It could be, oh, let's go, because I know you want to go. Or it could be, you're right, I'm tired, but thank you so much for understanding how hard I work. The point is, I have avoided rejection just by being a little bit more strategic in the way, and I've essentially positioned the, the, the negative response in the framing of where I'm at. So I'm just giving you a quick example that it's technically possible to be able to do that. So the idea here is to be able to deliver optimum dentistry in such a way that it just doesn't feel like that because a lot of the days can feel a bit like this where we're being passionate, trying to help, explaining everything, but at the end of the day it feels like you're dragging the patient across the finishing line, kicking and screaming. Um, it wouldn't it be nice if we could set things up, and this is what I'm really talking about, having it in such a way that the patient perceives their problem wants the solution more than the dentist wants the solution. I'd like to thank you for your kind attention and I hope to see many of you in the future. Thank you again.